Hey guys, how you doing? Chad and Ryan here with Boat and Tackle, and today we're talking. We're talking rod holders, everyone. Rod holders. Because we've got so many phone calls over the last few months about uh, what's the difference? What does yeah. this do? How much is that? You know, is it plastic? Isn't it plastic? Why yeah. is plastic? Why is aluminum better than plastic? So you know what? We're Chad, gonna, Chad and I have been talking, and we just thought we, we got to do one. We're gonna do the uh, you know good, better, best yep. scenario, or the whole dog and pony show. I love the whole dog and pony show. Yes. It's like you know, I, I live. I, I never business. had a pony. <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot of time doing that. Yeah. So take your weight, Chad. That being start. said, let's start down here on the entry level side of track sec here. This is the HBCS uh, uh, 200 rod holder. This is an ABS construction with a metal base. It does have a little diamond shaped base in the bottom so you can turn it whichever way you want in the track and then tighten it down. A lot of you have seen similar ones like this with companies like Scotty. One of the big differences maybe we have here with, with using a Scotty as an example, nothing wrong with it, great rod holder. However, it has a knob on the side, you loosen the knob, you adjust the rod where you want to put it. What TrackSec has done is they put a little spring-loaded mechanism in here that you just squeeze it and you tip it down where you want it and it, it locks itself back in, all right? Anywhere that you want to put the rod. Nice and easy way to do it, no twists and knobs, no messing around. One of the other things is often, you know, if depending on the length of your rod and stuff, sometimes it's hard, you're stepping out over the gunnel trying to reach to that rod. This actually has a little clip in the back that you clip it down and it allows you to slide this back in and lock it inside of the boat. So for those of you maybe with shorter arms that can't, that have a hard time reaching forward, you can you can have it out, you can have it back. Either way, it's locked in, it's not going anywhere. I got a few retired buddies, they love it because they, they don't have to move out of their seat, they can just reach over. Yes, they, well then have to put down their beer, right? <laughs> That's no, we oh, no, the they wouldn't have, no, they wouldn't have beer on the water. <laughs> Ginger beer. <laughs> Stepping up to the next one, again, very similar to the last one. This is the HBTS, uh, as in for tube style. Same mechanism, same, same scenario as the original one here. It's got the diamond base, so you can adjust it. You lock it back in, you squeeze the side, you put it where you want it. Again, same thing. All ABS construction up here, metal base down below for the strength. Yeah. Click it in where you want it, drop it. If you're used to more of the tube style and that's the kind of rod holder you like, maybe the TS200 is more of the style for you. Again, both of these, same price, just a different way of skinning the cat. It is. I, I agree I with you. Can we say that? that? Yeah, no, it's a good way okay. to say it. Like it is, because it, it is. It's just two flavors built the same. And again, as we're going to talk, we're moving now into, like, as Traxtech started their business, mm -hmm. all aluminum milled. Yeah. So that's why all their bases start off that way. All bases are aluminum milled, and then and then now we're going to talk about all the rest of the rod holders, which are complete aluminum. So let's step up to the next one, which is the RRH 230. So again, all metal construction, as Ryan said. This one has a little, little pulley on the back. You pull it, you click it into its positions. It is not moving once it's in those positions. That pin locks into place and it's going where it is. So you've got five fishable positions on this. It's a straightforward, no frills kind of rod holder. It does exactly what you want it to do. With a diamond base. Yep, diamond go, base. Again, turn it go left fore and right. aft. I can just demonstrate that here. I just had it tight down in the track. So you can have it facing to the front or rear of the boat. You know, we've got charter captains using this now. It's just a good rock solid, whether you're musky fisherman, whatever. This thing is up to the task. Yep. Right. Let's move on to the RH1. Leads us to the RH1. So basically what Traxtech did is they basically took what was going before, you know, un for some certain models were unscrewing theirs for Scotty and whatnot. These guys were pinching, adding pins and the and the and the pull. Now these are all they're they're spring loaded. So you pull to the left, you pull it out to move it, you lift it to twist it one way. Heavy duty and springs. Down. <laughs> it it is heavy see. duty, like very heavy. Right? And so that's why I always suggest to people, depending on what you're doing, right? It's a great rod holder. I know the uh I know Ryan Sharp, Captain Ryan Sharp of yep. uh Grand Bend Fishing, Grand Charters. Bend Fishing yep. Charters, loves them. He's got four of them uh, on his boat. They're they're heavy duty, they're nice. Once they're set, they're set. And uh just a super rod holder. And, and these fit onto the standard track. So these, yeah. because these lift and turn, they don't need the diamond base. So it's a standard track mount for these. And don't kid yourself, these might be spring loaded, but these are very, very heavy duty springs. You can see, you know, Ryan just pulling yeah. to try to lift them up and down. The nice thing is, is as he said, you know, once they're set, they're set. One of the things we didn't talk about actually on there, and I actually on all of these, was the keeper strap. Oh yeah, Chad, good um, one. So every rod holder that Traxtech sells comes with this keeper strap. And ultimately, what this is for is when you're cutting across the lake and you've got all your rods, you're picking a new spot, you stand up your rods in there, you take the keeper strap off, 
you go up over the seat of the reel, back down, you lock it into place, and that rod's not going anywhere. I just showed it when I uh, when I assembled my uh, when I loaded all the gear onto my buddy's boat in Vernon. Yeah. Yeah. Right? He asked the same question, what are these for? And as soon as I showed him, he's like, oh, I get it. Because when you're going through big chop, yeah. you're not really looking back at your rods. <laughs> no, and, and you know what? I don't mind losing your gear, but I don't want to lose my gear <laughs> off, off the end of the boat. <laughs> so Keeper so, strap is on every single rod holder, so that's so, good to know. So back to the RH1s, Yes, there's three flavors of it. So this is the one that mounts onto the tracks. Yep. And then, of course, we've got a lot of different boaters out there. And from where I come from, I spent a lot of years sailing as well. I got a lot of friends up in Muskoka. They're all, mm -hmm. a lot of them driving pontoon boats now, believe it or not, as they get to retire. They're fun to drive, yep. um, but they want to be able to put a rod on there either for their grandkids or their guests or even themselves, mm -hmm. right, if they're running around. So this one allows it, it's got a rail mount for it, right? And you can buy this with two different size rail mounts. So the nice thing about it is it's an RH1. You can go on our, our website, check it out. Two different style rail mounts for it, but all the same features just in a different mount mechanism. You're just not having to drill any holes into the boat, into the pontoon, Yeah, gives you flexibility. Uh, similarly to that, we've got another RH1 here that comes on what we call the ACB250 bracket. This is an Alumacraft bracket. So for those of you that have an Alumacraft like I do, there's the Alumatrack system that runs right across the gunnel. This thing locks right into that, you tighten it up, you've got a permanent rod holder mounted on there that's rock solid, you're not drilling a single hole into your boat. So again, if you're somebody that's a little bit gun shy about drilling those holes or mounting some tracks, the RH1 on the ACB250 bracket might be just the ticket. Um, we also have actually behind you there, Ryan. Oh yeah. I forgot about, for those of you that are, are Scotty users that have a Scotty downrigger, they don't really come with much for rod holders. Any of the ones I've seen are just have plastic. So tracks that came out with another RH1, again, all milled aluminum construction with a base that mounts right onto the Scotty downrigger uh, base. So this is just an instant retrofit and upgrade your rod holders right off the bat. So yeah, and again, um, I think Jeff was telling us that he started making that when uh, he had the request. Yeah, right. So that's uh, one nice thing about them. You know, if they get enough people asking, they just say, "Hey, we're going to make that thing." Yeah. So this is just another example of that. And then uh, it, we're going to move up now to the Cadillac of uh, of their rod holders, and that's the GT series. Absolutely. So you've got the GT uh, 100 and the GTLT 100. Um, the big thing about it is they're ratcheting. Right, and that's the one I of the. I like how you did that. Both of them. At the yeah, same time. Well, it's a nice feature. So these ones are diamond based again. So forward or aft, right? I should point out that's just on the GT100, not on the LT. Yeah, right? yep. Because yeah. it's lift and turn. Yeah. Um, pull the pin, lift it up. Pull the pin to put it down. Raise it up. The nice thing about these is, Chad, talk about the uh, number of. Yeah. So uh, you know, one of the things for any of you that have been fishing salmon or musky or anything that's you know got a bit of weight on it. When you've got this rod and it gets, you've got a big fish on and it pins the rod in here, it's really difficult to just to reach out and pull that rod out. There's just a lot of force. So the beauty is you can just pull it up, lift the rod straight out. You have no issues whatsoever. Yep. Charter guys like it because, you know, especially when you're bringing people that aren't real fishermen that haven't done a lot of fishing, it's easy for them to get the rod out and grab it. Just makes life a heck of a lot easier. And then that takes us to the GTLT. Absolutely. And the only difference is, as, as I said, this one had a diamond base. And with the diamond base, that's how we're turning it for four and a half. Well, in this, you know, same ratcheting thing, but this is lift and turn. So we're now we're lifting it, turning it, same idea, yeah. right? So it's just that one standard, and again, locked in place, whatnot, and back up. Yeah. And how many positions, Chad? Because this 17. goes below is not it goes below nine. Seventeen fishable positions. Two of them are below ninety degrees. So yeah. if, if you're looking to get that rod down below the gunnel. I mean, the GT series is, is the way to go about that. It's really this, the GT100 is our most popular yeah, rod we can't, holder by Yeah, we can't far. keep them in stock. No. I was glad we, we just got a load of the band, so it's yeah. good because we're starting our season again. They're, they're the rod holders that I don't want to be out of stock on because I just get a lot of calls for them. And um, now we get down to the end. This is what the, this is what the musky guys like to see. AL, the Alt 617 or? It was, it was so close. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ALT4 with the S17 rod holder, or some of you know it as the Salty. As I like to call it, the Salty. Yes. Um, it has a Salty mount to the top. But the nice thing about it is, for you guys that are fishing musky, and you know our good friend Ian Jones. Yep, Got Fish LSC Charters. Fish yep. LSC Charters. He's done a good video on it as well. Uh, speaks highly of it. We've sold a lot of units. Um, it's the only one, like, you know, you, your rod can come in and out quick when you're fishing musky, but the big, big part about it is, you can go straight down for down rod fishing, right? Yeah. And Chad, why don't you just elaborate, because you you spend sure. a lot of time on the water in, mm -hmm. in Lake St. Clair and you're fishing a lot of muskie. Mm -hmm. The reason for down rod. 
you know, there's a few different reasons. Uh, one, one of the may I? May I uh, oh, may you can I, try. Can I switch your spot oh, yeah, for a second? Sure. I, I, oh. So oh, by all means. So as Ryan said, you know, you got your rod in there. First off, the salty just locks it into position, so it can't go anywhere. Now you want to get that rod tip down in the water. Instead of having to turn a knob, adjust something, it's just a simple pin and it just locks where you want it. So the reason you might want to put that rod tip down in the water is for a couple reasons. If you're out in, especially if there's a lot of chop on the water, you got two, three foot waves. If you can imagine your rod sitting, you know, just running straight out the side of the boat or what they call a boat rod, what's happening is every time you go over a wave and the boat is going up and down, that bait is going all over the place. There's really no, you know, consistency with the bait. And if you can imagine a muskie trying to chase that, it would be very tough, right? So by putting this rod tip down in the water, maybe a, a, a foot below the water, no constant pull it, as it, the waves go exactly. over. Exactly. It's, it's just it's, keeping that bait nice yeah. and consistent so that the fish have a, a fighting chance to get at it. A lot of muskies also like the fact that the rod tip in the water also, especially in St. Clair, keeps a lot of the weeds from getting back to your bait. So that rod tip is there and it's kind of catching a bunch of the weeds. You'll often see them pulling the rod out, you know, halfway cleaning through and cleaning it off because there's so many weeds on yeah. there. But I mean, it's just kind of a nice bonus that it is keeping the weeds away from your bait. So those are a couple of the main reasons you might want to consider a down rod. Um, but even if you want to use this for boat rods, just two two lines running out the side of the boat. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the ALT4, we've got this in a, side, a three, a four. I think we can get a six or an eight Yeah, and well. when, when Chad's talking about that, that's the height off, the the, height off, of the, off your yeah. gunnel, right? And because some guys, you know, depending on the type of boat that they've got, they don't want to be bending over all the time because let's Absolutely. face it, these are big rods, they're big weights on there, big baits. So the higher it up it gets just means you can just lean over and grab it. So it all depends on your preference. Yeah, it's just about making life easy on the boat. Oh uh, yeah. And well, why did we start the business, Chad? To make what? life easy. To make life, we want to fish, laugh. That's and, it. And enjoy what we're doing. Shoot like, a couple of videos. Yeah. You know. So there's our rods. I really, if you have any questions, um, please reach out to us at uh, www.boatandtackle.ca. Or give us a call at 1-800-485-8950. Uh, we're always here to help. We have a lot absolutely. of people calling us. Um, we can't stress enough that when you're, you know, when you're looking at outfitting your boat, uh, especially if it's new or before you go and stick a downrigger on it somewhere where you don't necessarily know where you want to, call us. Call us. Yeah. We're, I do a lot of boat installs. So uh, we're, we're pretty knowledgeable um, on where, how the gear should be mounted, what to do, what not to do before that. So uh, like I said, give us a call, but there's a good overview of rod holders for everybody that's been asking. Listen, thanks for checking us out. We'll see you on the water.